Hey there, Pathway Church. Uh, welcome to our third reading this week. Uh, today is Thursday, and traditionally we refer to this Thursday as Monday Thursday. Uh, Monday, or Mondi, pardon me, is, uh, comes from the Latin word for command. And these readings uh, focus on uh, Christ's time with his disciples, in which he institutes the Lord's Supper as well as washes their feet. Uh, it keeps an eye the Passover tradition as well, and our readings today are going to reflect that. Uh, so let's start with our psalm reading here, uh, and I'm going to use it as a prayer, so I'm going to remove my hat, and I'm going to pray through this psalm as our opening prayer. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Amen. So our reading starts, first of all, in Exodus chapter 12. And this is going to give us a context for our gospel reading today. And this context also plays into the wider tradition of Easter itself. Exodus Chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. Continuing on at Exodus 12, verses 5 to 10. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of their houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water but roasted over a fire, with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it until till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. So the Passover is instituted here as a remembrance, as an active participation of the people, and it will keep them safe as you might remember from the wider kind of story of Exodus itself. I want you to remember the word here, without, or the phrase rather, without defect. Only these creatures without defect would be fitting for this activity. This is an important thing to see that Passover is at the heart of Israel's experience, even from its very inception, or close to its very inception. It's a tradition that has carried on from this point until even present day, and is a tradition that would be would have been very important for Christ and his followers also. Let's continue on with our Exodus reading. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. 
for the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. So again, Passover is instituted as this, this righteous activity that will preserve the people who take part in it. The Lord will see the homes that partake in this, and he will deem them righteous, and their, his judgment will not pass upon them. Your mind should be already racing with thoughts about Christ and his sacrifice. Christ, our true lamb, our pure, unblemished lamb, is slaughtered for our sins. That is Easter. This is to be a lasting ordinance fulfilled by Christ Jesus himself on the cross and in his resurrection. This crucifixion is not just a feel-good thing for us. It is our preservation. It is our life. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a difficult thing, but it's a beautiful thing. Let's continue on with our reading now, our gospel reading in John chapter 13. We're going to start with 1 to 17. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also shall wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So at the beginning I said that we often refer to this point in Holy Week, this Thursday, as Monday Thursday because it is Christ's command that we do as he has done for us. What is his example here? He is washing the disciples' feet. feet. He's putting himself in a position of service to honor them. Is it necessary that they have their feet washed? Perhaps some of them had really dirty feet. And it was a common ritual for people at the end of their day. Ritual is the wrong word, but it was a common practice at the end of the day for people to wash their feet regardless of their culture. It was quite dirty wearing sandals and walking around and as their main mode of transportation. And Christ yet sets for them this as an example that you should do, we should do, pardon me, all of us, we should all do this as he has done for us. Wash each other's feet? Absolutely. But rather, or even more so, take a posture of service for one another. Jesus washed Simon's feet and he said, no, or Peter said, no, don't wash my feet. 
I need to wash your feet. And Peter, in a way, is right. Peter is lower than God, or Jesus, pardon me. And he feels uncomfortable when Jesus is serving him. And yet Jesus says that this is necessary. Unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Unless we are willing to be served by Christ and then serve others, we have no part with Jesus. Both in the little things, like washing each other's feet, and the big things, like giving of our wealth, giving of our time, giving of food, giving of shelter. If we are not willing to do these things, we are not willing to be joined with Christ. This is serious. This is true. It demands something honest of us, something real of us, and we must follow it. Christians who do not serve one another and do not serve others are not Christians. They're functional atheists. Service is intertwined deeply and inseparably with living Christianity. If you bear this in mind, let's proceed. John chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. When he was gone, Judas, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will only be with I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So again, this text just reiterates. What is that command? Why is Monday Thursday called Monday Thursday? A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. People will not know who Christ is by our t-shirts. People will not know who Christ is by our churches. People will not know who Christ is by the songs that we sing or the things that we say. People will know who Christ is by the things that we do, by the way that we show each other love, which, yes, includes speaking sometimes, but includes action also. If we do not know these things, we are nothing but just religious phrase repeaters. <laughs> we need this love for one another to be present in our lives. In order for anyone to be convinced about Christianity and the truth of the cross, they need the Spirit to be bringing them in, and we, they need to be able to see us for what we are supposed to be, those that carry the banner of God through service and through love. Let's continue into 1 Corinthians. 11 verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So you might have thought it odd earlier that when in talking about the Passover, it was described as an ordinance that will continue. And yet we as Christians don't celebrate Passover in the form, perhaps, that it was described in earlier in our Exodus reading. And the reason why is for us believers, for Christians, Passover has been changed. It is now a remembrance, as it has been, but it is now a remembrance of Jesus Christ, of his betrayal, of his death, and his resurrection. This cup 
of communion is the new covenant in my blood. Christ's blood has replaced the ordinance of Passover forevermore. The wine and bread or the juice and bread, whatever we partake in as families and as church members, is this new remembrance of Passover. It is this new remembrance of Christ's slaying and rising again. We aren't meeting as a church body, and so I want to challenge anyone who watches this to consider how you and your family can partake in communion this week. There are many ways of doing it, but the core that must remain is that it is taken as a meal in remembrance of Christ Jesus. You can't invite anyone over at this point in time, but nonetheless, it is necessary to be done. So make some time with your family this week to take part in a communion service. You might say, well, Rob, I don't have the training, or blah, 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 or make excuses that I can't do communion, or it'll be awkward, it'll be strange. Any ritual that we do for the first time in our home can often feel strange. But I recommend that if you have not yet taken communion in your home with your family, I implore you to do so. Easter without communion is a very strange thing. So I encourage you to take this communion this week or on Sunday in remembrance of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. As we close, I'd like to pray through Psalm 116, verses 12 to 19. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the people to the Lord, pardon me, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Whether we're at church, or whether we're at home, or whether we're in a Zoom meeting, we must fulfill our vows to the Lord. Amen, and praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me today for our Thursday Easter reading.